the seventeenth book of the odysseys of homer this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by phil schempf the seventeenth book of the odysseys of homer translated by george chapman the argument telemachus returned to town makes to his curious mother known in part his travels after whom ulysses to the court doth come in good eumeus's guide and pressed to witness of the wooer's feast whom though twice ten years did bestow in far-off parts his dog doth know another argument row ulysses shows through all disguise whom his dog knows who knowing dies but when the heir's rosy birth the morn arose telemachus did for the town dispose his early steps and took to his command his fair long lance well sorting with his hand thus parting with eumeus now my friend i must to town lest too far i extend my mother's moan for me who till her eyes mine own eyes witness varies tears and cries through all extremes do then this charge of mine and guide to town this hapless guest of thine to beg elsewhere his further festival give they that please i cannot give to all mine own wants take up for myself my pain if it incense him he the worst shall gain the lovely truth i love and must be plain alas friend said his father nor do i desire at all your further charity tis better beg in cities than in fields and take the worst a beggar's fortune yields nor am i apt to stay in swine-sties more however ever the great chief before the poor ranks must to every step obey but go your man and my command shall sway anon yet too by favour when your fires have comforted the cold heat age expires and when the sun's flame hath besides corrected the early air abroad not being protected by these my bare weeds from the morning's frost which if so much ground is to be engrossed by my poor feet as you report may give too violent a charge to the heat by which i live this said his son went on with sprightly pace and to the wooers studied little grace arrived at home he gave his javelin stay against a lofty pillar and bold way made further in when having so far gone that he transcended the fair porch of stone the first by far that gave his entry eye was nurse eurycleia who the embroidery of stools there set was giving cushions fair who ran upon him and a rapt repair shed tears of joy about him gathered round the other maids his head and shoulders crowned with kisses and embraces from above the queen herself came like the queen of love or bright diana cast about her son her kind embraces with a fusion of loving tears kissed both his lovely eyes his cheeks and forehead and gave all supplies with this entreaty welcome sweetest light i never had conceit to set quick sight on thee thus soon when thy loved father's fame as far as pylos did thy spirit inflame and that search ventured all unknown to me o oh, say by what power camest thou now to be mine eyes dear object he returned reply move me not now when you my scape descry from imminent death to think me fresh and trapped the feared wound rubbing felt before i scaped double not needless passion on a heart whose joy so green is and so apt to invert but pure weeds putting on ascend and take your women with you that ye all may make vows of full hecatombs in sacred fire to all the godheads if their only sire vouchsafe revenge of guest rights wronged which he is to protect as being their deity my way shall be directed to the hall of common concourse that i thence may call a stranger who from off the pillion shore came friendly with me whom i sent before with all my soldiers but in chief did charge piraeus with him wishing him to enlarge his love to him at home in best affair and utmost honours till mine own repair her son thus spoken his words could not bear the wings too easily through her either ear but putting pure weeds on made vows entire of perfect hecatombs in sacred fire to all the deities if their only sire vouchsafed revenge of guest rights wronged which he was to protect as being their deity 
her son left house in his fair hand his lance his dogs attending and on every glance his looks cast from them pallas put a grace that made him seem of the celestial race whom come to concourse every man admired about him thronged the wooers and desired all good to him in tongues but in their hearts most deep ills threatened to his most deserts of whose huge rout once free he cast glad eye on some that long before his infancy were with his father great and gracious grave halitherses mentor antiphus to whom he went took seat by them and they inquired of all things since his parting day to them piraeus came and brought his guests along the city thither whom not least the prince respected nor was long before he rose and met him the first word yet bore piraeus from them both whose haste besought the prince to send his women to see brought the gifts from his house that atrides gave which his own roofs he thought would better save the wise prince answered i can scarce conceive the way to these works if the wooers reeve by private stratagem my life at home i rather wish piraeus may become the master of them than the best of these but if i sow in their fields of excess slaughter and ruin then thy trust employ and to me joying bring thou those with joy this said he brought home his grief practised guest where both put off both oiled and did invest themselves in rich robes washed and sate and eat his mother in fair chair taking seat directly opposite her loom applied who when her son and guest had satisfied their appetites with feast said o my son you know that ever since your sire was won to go in agamemnon's guide to troy attempting sleep i never did enjoy one night's good rest but made my quiet bed a sea blown up with sighs with tears still shed and brood and troubled yet through all your miss in your late voyage hath been made for this that you might know the abode your father made you shun to tell me what success you had now then before the insolent access the wooers straight will force on us express what you have heard i will said he and true we came to pylos where the studious do that any father could afford his son but new arrived from some course he had run to an extreme length in some voyage vowed nestor the pastor of the people showed to me arrived in turrets thrust up high where not his brave sons were loved more than i yet of the unconquered ever sufferer ulysses never he could set his ear alive or dead from any earthy man but to the great lacedaemonian atrides famous for his lance he sent with horse and chariots me to learn the event from his relation where i had the view of argive helen whose strong beauties drew by wills of gods so many grecian states and trojans under such laborious fates where menelaus asked me what affair to lacedaemon rendered my repair i told him all the truth who made reply o deed of most abhorred indecency a sort of impotence attempt his bed whose strength of mine hath cities levelled as to a lion's den when any hind hath brought her young calves to their rest inclined when he is ranging hills and herby dales to make of feeders there his festivals but turning to his lustre calves and dam he shows abhorred death in his anger's flame so should ulysses find this rabble housed in his free turrets courting his espoused foul death would fall them oh i would to jove phoebus and pallas that when he shall prove the broad report of his exhausted store true with his eyes his nerves and sinews wore that vigour then that in the lesbian towers provoked to wrestle with the iron powers philomelides vaunted he approved when down he hurled his challenger and moved huge shouts from all the archives then in view if once come home he all those forces drew about him there to work they all were dead and should find bitter his attempted bed but what you ask and sue for i as far as i have heard the true spoke mariner will tell directly nor delude your ear he told me that an island did in sphere in much discomfort great laertes son and that the nymph calypso overrun with his affection kept him in her caves where men nor ship of power to brook the waves were near his convoy to his country's shore 
and where herself importuned evermore his quiet stay which not obtained by force she kept his person from all else recourse this told atrides which was all he knew nor stayed i more but from the gods there blew a prosperous wind that set me quickly here this put his mother quite from all her cheer when theoclymenus the augur said o woman honoured with ulysses bed your son no doubt knows clearly nothing more hear me yet speak that can the truth uncore nor will be curious jove then witness bear and this thy hospitable table here with this whole household of your blameless lord that at this hour his royal feet are shored on his loved country earth and that even here coming or creeping he will see the cheer these wooers make and in his soul's field sow seeds that shall thrive to all their overthrow this set a shipboard i knew sorted thus and cried it out to your telemachus penelope replied would this would prove you well should witness a most friendly love and gifts such of me as encountering fame should greet you with blessed mortal's name this mutual speech passed all the wooers were hurling the stone and tossing of the spear before the palace in the paved court where other whiles their petulant resort sat plotting injuries but when the hour of supper entered and the feeding power brought sheep from field that filled up every way with those that used to furnish that purvey met on the herald who of all the rest pleased most the wooers and at every feast was ever near said you whose kind consort make the fair branches of the tree our court grace it within now and your suppers take you that for health and fair contention's sake will please your minds no bodies must have meat plays worse than idleness in times to eat this said all left came in cast by on thrones and chairs their garments their provisions were sheep swine goats the chiefly great and fat besides an ox that from the herd they gat and now the king and herdsmen from the field in good way were to town twixt whom was held some walking conference which thus began the good eumaeus guest your will was won because the prince commanded to make way up to the city though i wished your stay and to have made you guardian of my stall but i in care and fear of what might fall in after anger of the prince forbore the checks of princes touch their subjects sore but make we haste the day is nearly ended and cold airs still are in the even extended i know it said he consider all your charge is given to one that understands at large haste then hereafter you shall lead the way afford your staff too if it fit your stay that i may use it since you say our pass is less friend to a weak foot than it was thus cast he on his neck his nasty scrip all patched and torn a cord that would not slip for knots and bracks about the mouth of it made serve the turn and then his swain did fit his forced state with a staff then plied they hard their way to town their cottage left in guard to swains and dogs and now eumaeus led the king along his garments to a thread all bare and burned and he himself hard bore upon his staff at all parts like a poor and sad old beggar but when now they got the rough highway their voyage wanted not much of the city where a fount they reached from whence the town their choicest water fetched that ever overflowed and curious art was shown about it in which three had part whose names neritus and polyctor were and famous ithacus it had a sphere of poplar that ran round about the wall and into a lofty rock let fall continual supply of cool clear stream on whose top to the nymphs that were supreme in those parts loves a stately altar rose where every traveller did still impose devoted sacrifice at this fount found these silly travellers a man renowned for guard of goats which now he had in guide whose huge stored herd two herdsmen kept beside for all herds it excelled and bred a feed for wooers only he was dolius's seed and called melantheus who casting eye on these two there he chid them terribly and so passed mean that even the wretched fate now on ulysses he did irritate his fume to this effect he did pursue why so tis now at all parts passing true that ill leads ill 
good evermore doth train with like his like why thou unenvied swain whither dost thou lead this same victless leaguer this bane of banquets this most nasty beggar whose sight doth make one sad it so abhors who with his standing in so many doors hath broke his back and in his beggary tends to beg base crusts but to no manly ends as asking swords or with activity to get a cauldron wouldst thou give him me to farm my stable or to sweep my yard and bring browse to my kids and that preferred he should be at my keeping for his pains to drink as much whey as his thirsty veins would still be swilling whey made all his fees his monstrous belly would oppress his knees but he hath learned to lead a base life about and will not work but crouch among the rout for broken meat to cram his burst and gut yet this i'll say and he will find it put in sure effect that if he enters where ulysses roofs cast shade the stools will there about his ears fly all the house will throw and rub his ragged sides with cuffs and ow past these reviles his manless rudeness spurned divine ulysses who at no part turned his face from him but had his spirit fed with these two thoughts if he should strike him dead with his bestowed staff or at his feet make his direct head and pavement meet but he bore all and entertained a breast that in the strife of all extremes did rest eumaeus frowning on him chid him yet and lifting up his hands to heaven he set this bitter curse at him o you that bear fair name to be the race of jupiter nymphs of these fountains if ulysses ever burned thighs to you that hid in fat did never fail your acceptance or of lamb or kid grant this grace to me let this man thus hid shine through his dark fate make some god his guide that to thee goat herd this same pallet's pride thou drivest afore thee he may come and make the scatterings of the earth and overtake thy wrongs with forcing thee to ever err about the city hunted by his fear and in the mean space by some slothful swains let lousy sickness gnaw thy cattle's veins o oh, gods replied melanthius what a curse hath this dog barked out and can yet do worse this man shall i have given into my hands when in a well-built ship to far-off lands i shall transport him that should i want here my sale of him may find me victuals there and for ulysses would to heaven his joy the silver-bearing bow-god would destroy this day within his house as sure as he the day of his return shall never see this said he left them going silent on but he outwent them and took straight upon the palace royal which he entered straight sat with the wooers and his trenchers freight the carvers gave him of the flesh there vented but bread the reverend butlerus presented he took against eurymachus his place who most of all the wooers gave him grace and now ulysses and his swain got near when round about them visited their ear the hollow harp's delicious stricken string to which did phemius near the wooers sing then by the hand ulysses took his swain and said eumaeus one may here see plain in many a grace that laertiades built here these turrets and amongst others these his whole court armed with such a goodly wall the corners and the cope majestical his double gates and turrets built too strong for force or virtue ever to expune i know the feasters in it now abound their cates cast such a savour and the sound the harp gives argues an accomplished feast the gods made music banquet's dearest guest these things said he your skill may tell with ease since you are graced with greater knowledges but now consult we how these works shall sort if you will first approach this praised court and see these wooers i remaining here or i shall enter and yourself forbear but be not too tedious in your stay lest thrust ye be and buffet it away brain hath no fence for blows look to it i pray you speak to one that comprehends said he go you before and here adventure me i have of old been used to cuffs and blows 
my mind is hardened and have borne the throes of many a sour event in waves and wars where knocks and buffets are no foreigners and this same belly by no mean the greatest abstinent can ever wean men suffer much bane by the belly's rage for whose sake ships in all their equipage are armed and set out to the untamed seas their bulks full fraught with ills to enemies such speech they changed when in the yard there lay a dog called argus which before his way assumed for ilion ulysses bred yet stood his pleasure then in little stead as being too young but growing to his grace young men made choice of him for every chase for of their wild goats of their hares or hearts but his king gone and he now past his parts lay all abjectly on the stable store before the ox stall and the mule's stable door to keep the clothes cast from the peasants hands while they laid compass on ulysses lands the dog with ticks unlooked to overgrown but by this dog no sooner seen but known was wise ulysses who new entered there up went his dog's laid ears and coming near up he himself rose fawned and wagged his stern couched close his ears and lay so nor discern could evermore his dear loved lord again ulysses sought nor had power to abstain from shedding tears which far off seeing his swain he dried from his sight clean to whom he thus his grief dissembled tis miraculous that such a dog as this should have his lair on such a dunghill for his form is fair and yet i know not if there were in him good pace or parts for all his goodly limb or he lived empty of those inward things as are those trencher beagles tending kings whom for their pleasures or their glory's sake or fashion they into their favour take this dog said he was servant to one dead a huge time since but if he bore his head for form and quality of such a height as when ulysses bound for the ilian fight or quickly after left him your rapt eyes would then admire to see him use his thighs in strength and swiftness he would nothing fly nor anything let scape if once his eyes seized any wild beast he knew straight his scent go where he would away with him he went nor was there ever any savage stood amongst the thickets of the deepest wood a long time before him but he pulled him down as well by that true hunting to be shown in such vast coverts as for speed of pace in any open lawn for in deep chase he was a passing wise and well-nosed hound and yet is all this good in him uncrowned with any grace here now nor he more fed than any errant cur his king is dead far from his country and his servants are so negligent they lend his hound no care where masters rule not but let men alone you never there see honest service done that man's half virtue jove takes quite away that once is sunburnt with the servile day this said he entered the well-builded towers upbearing right upon the glorious wooers and left poor argus dead his lord's first sight since that time twenty years bereft his light telemachus did far the first behold eumaeus enter and made signs he should come up to him he noting came and took on earth his seat and then the master cook served in more banquet of which part he set before the wooers part the prince did get who sate alone his table placed aside to which the herald did the bread divide after eumaeus entered straight the king like to a poor and heavy aged thing bore hard upon his staff and was so clad as would have made his mere beholder sad upon the ashen floor his limbs he spread and gainst a cypress threshold stayed his head the tree wrought smooth and in a line direct tried by the plum and by the architect the prince then bade the herdsman give him bread the finest there and see that prostrated at all parts plight of his given all the cheer his hands could turn to take said he and bear these cates to him and bid him beg of all these wooers here and to their festival bear up with all the impudence he can bashful behaviour fits no needy man he heard and did his will hold guest said he telemachus commends these cates to thee bids thee bear up and all these wooers implore wit must make impudent whom fate makes poor o jove said he 
do my poor prayers the grace to make him blest of the mortal race and every thought now in his generous heart to deeds that further my desires convert thus took he in with both hands his store and in the uncouth scrip that lay before his ill-shod feet reposed it whence he fed all time the music to the feasters played both jointly ending then began the wooers to put in old act their tumultuous powers when pallas standing close did prompt her friend to prove how far the bounties would extend of those proud wooers so to let him try who most who least had learned humanity however no thought touched minerva's mind that any one should scape his reek designed he handsomely became all crept about to every wooer held a forced hand out and all his work did in so like a way as he had practised begging many a day and though they knew all beggars could do this yet they admired it as no deed of his though far from thought of other used expense and pity to him who he was and whence inquiring mutually melanthius then hear me ye wooers of the far-famed queen about this beggar i have seen before this face of his and know for certain more that this swain brought him hither what he is and of whence he came flies me reply to this antinous made and mocked eumaeus thus o thou renowned herdsman why to us brought'st thou this beggar it serves not our hands that other land leapers and cormorans profane poor knaves lie on us unconducted but you must bring them so amiss instructed art thou in course of thrift as not to know thy lord's goods racked in this their overflow which thinks thou nothing thou call'st in these eumaeus answered though you may be wise you speak not wisely who calls in a guest that is a guest himself none call to feast other than men that are of public use prophets or poets whom the gods produce physicians for men's ills or architects such men the boundless earth affords respects bounded in honour and may call them well but poor men who calls who doth so excel in others good to do himself an ill but all ulysses servants have been still eyesores in your way more than all that woo and chiefly i but what care i for you as long as these roofs hold as thralls to none the wise penelope and her godlike son forbear said he and leave this tongue's bold ill and Tinibus uses to be crossing still and give sharp words his blood that humour bears to set men still together by the ears but turning then to Antinous, oh said he you entertain a father's care of me to turn these eating guests out tis advice of needful use for my poor faculties but god doth not allow this there must be some care of poor men in humanity what you yourselves take give i not envy but give command that hospitality be given all strangers nor shall my powers fear if this mood in me reach my mother's ear much less the servants that are here to see ulysses house kept in his old degree but you bear no such mind your wits more cast to fill yourselves than let another taste antinous answered him brave spoken man whose mind's free fire seek check no virtue can if all we wooers here would give as much as my mind serves his largesse should be such as would for three months serve his far-off way from troubling your house with more cause of stay this said he took a stool up that did rest beneath the board his spangled feet at feast and offered at him but the rest gave all and filled his fulsome scrip with festival and so ulysses for the present was and for the future furnished and his past bent to the door to eat yet could not leave antinous so but said do you too give loved lord your presence makes a show to me as you not worst were of the company but best and so much that you seem the king and therefore you should give some better thing than bread like others i will spread your praise through all the wide world that have in my days kept house myself and trod the wealthy ways of other men even to the title blest and often have i given an erring guest how mean soever to the utmost gain of what he wanted kept whole troops of men and had all other comings in with which men live so well and gain the fame of rich yet jove consumed all he would have it so to which his mean was this 
he made me go far off for egypt in the rude consort of all ways wandering pirates where in port i bade my loved men draw their ships ashore and dwell amongst them sent out some to explore up to the mountains who intemperate and their inflamed bloods bent to satiate forged the rich fields hailed the women thence and unweaned children with foul expense both of their fames and bloods the cry then flew straight to the city and the great fields grew with horse and foot and flamed with iron arms when jove that breaks the thunder in alarms an ill flight cast amongst my men not one inspired with spirit to stand and turn upon the fierce pursuing foe and therefore stood their ill fate thick about them some in blood and some in bondage toils led by constraint fastening upon them me along they sent to cyprus with a stranger prince they met demeter iasades who the imperial seat of that sweet island swayed in strong command and thus feel i here needs contemned hand and what god sent said he this suffering bane to vex our banquet stand off nor profane my board so boldly lest i show thee here cyprus and egypt made more sour than there you are a saucy set-faced vagabond about with all you go and they beyond discretion give thee since they find not here the least proportion set down to their cheer but every fountain hath his under floods it is no bounty to give others goods o gods replied ulysses i see now you bear no soul in this your goodly show beggars at your board i perceive should get scarce salt from your hands if themselves brought meat since sitting where another's board is spread that flows with feast not to the broken bread will your allowance reach nay then said he and looked austerely if so saucy be your suffered language i suppose that clear you shall not scape without some broken cheer thus wrapped he up a stool with which he smit the king's right shoulder twixt his neck and it he stood him like a rock and tinnavus's dart nor stirred ulysses who in his great heart deep ills projected which for time yet close he bound in silence shook his head and went out to the entry where he then gave vent to his full scrip sat on the earth and eat and talked still to the wooers hear me yet ye wooers of the queen it never grieves a man to take blows where for sheep or beeves or other main possessions a man fights but for his harmful belly this man smites whose love to many a man breeds many a woe and if the poor have gods and furies too before antinous wear his nuptial wreath he shall be worn upon the dart of death harsh guest said he sit silent at your meat or seek your desperate plight some safer seat lest by the hands or heels youth drag your years and rend your rotten rags about your ears this made the rest as highly hate his folly as he had violated something holy when one even of the proudest thus began thou dost not nobly thus to play the man on such an errant wretch o ill-disposed perhaps some sacred godhead goes enclosed even in his abject outside for the gods have often visited these rich abodes like such poor stranger pilgrims since their powers being always shapeful glide through towns and towers observing as they pass still who they be that piety love and who impiety this all men said but he held sayings cheap and all this time telemachus did heap sorrow on sorrow on his beating heart to see his father stricken yet let part no tear to earth but shook his head and thought as deep as those ills that were after wrought the queen now hearing of her poor guest's stroke said to her maid as to her wooer she spoke i wish the famous for his bow the sun would strike thy heart so her wish thus begun her lady fair eurynomy pursued her execration and did thus conclude so may our vows call down from heaven his end and let no one life of the rest extend his life till morning o eurynomy replied the queen may all the gods speak in thee for all the wooers we should rate as foes since all their wheels they place in others woes but this antinous we past all should hate as one resembling black and cruel fate a poor strange wretch begged here 
compelled by need asked all and every one gave in his deed filled his sad scrip and eased his heavy wants only this man bestowed unmanly taunts and with a cruel blow his force let fly twixt neck and shoulders showed his charity these minds above she and her maids did show while at his scrip ulysses sat below in which time she eumaeus called and said go good eumaeus and see soon conveyed the stranger to me bid him come and take my salutations for his welcome's sake and my desired serve if he hath not heard or seen distressed ulysses who hath erred like such a man and therefore chance may fall he hath by him been met and spoke with all o queen said he i wish to heaven your ear were quit of this unreverend noise you hear from these rude wooers when i bring the guest such words your ear would let into your breast as would delight it to your very heart three nights and days i did my roof impart to his fruition for he came to me the first of all men since he fled the sea and yet he had not given a perfect end to his relation of what woes did spend the spite of fate on him but as you see a singer breathing out of deity love kindling lines when all men seated near are wrapped with endless thirst to ever hear so sweetened he my bosom at my meat affirming that ulysses was in crete where first the memories of minos were a guest to him there dwelling then as dear as his true father and from thence came he tired on with sorrows tossed from sea to sea to cast himself in dust and tumble here at wooer's feet for blows and broken cheer but of ulysses where the thesprots dwell a wealthy people fame he said did tell the still survival who his native light was bound for now with treasure infinite call him said she that he himself may say this over to me we shall soon have way given by the wooers they as well at gate as set within doors used to recreate their high-fed spirits as their humours lead they follow and may well for still they tread uncharged ways here their own wealth lying unwasted in poor kept houses only something tasted their bread and wine is by their household swains but they themselves let loose continual reins to our expenses making slaughter still of sheep goats oxen feeding past their fill and vainly lavishing our richest wine all these extending past the sacred line for here lives no man like ulysses now to curb these reins but should he once show his country light his presence he and his would soon revenge these wooers injuries this said about the house in echoes round her son's strange kneesings made a horrid sound at which the queen yet laughed and said go call the stranger to me heardst thou not to all my words last uttered what a kneesing break from my telemachus from whence i make this sure conclusion that the death and fate of every wooer here is near his date call then the guest and if he tell as true what i shall ask him coat cloak all things new these hands shall yield him this said down he went and told ulysses that the queen had sent to call him to her that she might inquire about her husband what her sad desire urged her to ask and if she found him true both coat and cassock which he needed knew her hands would put on him and that the bread which now he begged amongst the common tread should freely feed his hunger now from her who all he wished would to his wants prefer his answer was i will with fit speed tell the whole truth to the queen for passing well i know her lord since he and i have shared in equal sorrows but i am much scared with this rude multitude of wooers here the rage of whose pride smites heaven's brazen sphere of whose rout when one struck me for no fault telemachus nor none else turned the assault from my poor shoulders therefore though she haste beseech the queen her patience will see past the day's broad light and then may she inquire tis but my closer pressing to the fire in the evening cold because my weeds you know are passing thin for i made bold to show their bracks to you and prayed your kind supply he heard and hasted and met instantly the queen upon the pavement in his way who asked what bringst thou not what cause of stay find his austere supposes takes he fear of the unjust wooers or thus hard doth bear on any other doubt the house objects he does me wrong and gives too nice respects to his feared safety 
Eat is right, said he, and what he fears should move the policy of any wise one, taking care to shun the violent wooers. He bids bide till sun hath hid his broad light, and believe it, queen, twill make your best course, since you two, unseen, may pass the encounter, you to speak more free, and he your ear gain less distractedly. The guest is wise, said she, and well doth give the right thought use. Of all the men that live, life serves none such as these proud wooers are, to give a good man cause to use his care. Thus, all agreed, amongst the wooers goes Eumaeus to the prince, and whispering close, said, Now, my love, my charge shall take up me, your goods and mine. What here is, you must see in fit protection. But in chief, regard your own dear safeguard, whose state study hard, lest sufferance seize you. Many a wicked thought conceal these wooers, whom just Jove see brought to utter ruin, ere it touch at us. So chance it, friend, replied Telemachus, your beaver taken go, in first of day come, and bring sacrifice the best you may. To me and to the immortals be the care, or whatsoever here the safeties are. This said, he sat in his elaborate throne. Eumaeus, fed to satisfaction, went to his charge, left both the court and walls full of secure and fatal festivals, in which the wooer's pleasures still would sway, and now begun the even's near-ending day. End of the Seventeenth Book